Hi, my name is Leighton Jin. I'm the Director of Development for the American Documentary and Animation Film Festival, which is March 21st to 25th. We're also known as Amdocs. Today we have a great filmmaker, uh, award-winning filmmaker already in his young career, Giorgio Giotto, and his movie is uh, Wings of Dust. So uh, that won the Student Academy Award, correct? Yes, yes. And it was on the short list for an Oscar nomination, which is amazing. Uh, Giorgio, can you tell us about your, your fantastic film? Thank you, Lenton. Thanks so much. Uh, so my film is about Vidal Merma. He's an indigenous Peruvian uh, journalist that fights every day for the right of clean water. And most of all, he fights to help his son, uh, Eric, to live his dream, which is uh, to one day be able to live in a place where they don't have to anymore live uh, under threats from the police or uh, in a really polluted place. Now, how did, how did you meet him? How did you, how did you come across him? And, and how did you uh, get him to agree to, tell, to have you tell his story? Yeah, it's really interesting. I met Vidal on a job. I was a cinematographer in uh, South America for another gig, and Vidal happened to be the fixer. So this figure that you know uh, doesn't have a great consideration usually, and drives you around and brings you to places. And talking to him, I discover that he really, really was a story. He really was that important piece that can teach us so many things. And you, and this was a student project, so um, yeah. I hope you got an A on this. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember if I did. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but but um, you know, just watching your trailer, this sounds like a very uh, harrowing, dangerous piece. Because I mean, I was watching them. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's easier ways to get an A in your class. But can, can you can you tell me what were some of the risks of doing this this film? It looked at times dangerous. Yeah, you said the right word about student. Um, I was a student, in fact, I was doing my thesis for NYU at the time, and it was really really risky. And many things right now, thinking back, I'm like, then why why did I do that? I'm, I'm, you know, but. When you're a student, sometimes you don't even take care of those things. And it happened that when I came back to New York, I had a chance to do um, safe training by the New York Times. And so many things I learned through the safe training, I was like, I just wish I would have applied uh, those safety plans, uh, you know, at the time. But fortunately, you know, I was under the wing uh, of Vidal that was always really loving, always really protecting uh, with me. Um, and he's a journalist. He's a really professional journalist. So thanks to that, I was able to basically, um, you know, get my back covered. But he, if he wasn't there, uh, I believe that, you know, I would have made lots of mistakes uh, due to my really naive um, approach to this as a student, as a really, um, you know, uh, very happy about the project. I would have just run to way more risk if it wasn't for Vidal. It sounds like a great learning experience, harrowing at oh, times, but yeah. still great. Oh yeah, definitely. Can you talk about the relationship you built with Vidal? Because uh, you said some some really uh, beautiful things when we spoke previously, but you're you're trying to help him out. Can you talk about the relationship and how you're trying to help him out right now? Yeah. So the relationship, it's literally a brotherhood. He is kind of an older brother for me. Um, I learn from his resilience. I learn from his sense of hope. And, you know, this connection started from the moment when lots of things were going wrong on the shoot. My drone broke, uh, problems with camera, uh, financial problems. And it was always there to remind me that there was always a solution. And this approach is really positive approach is what inspired me so much and told me so much that there is never, you know, no matter what's happening to you, there's always a solution. In his case, what really struck in my heart, heart was seeing, uh, you know, was looking at him and thinking, damn, 
this man leaves threats every day. He doesn't have clean water. He has a lot of health issues, but he still keeps going. He still uh, finds the time uh, to bring his son up on a mountain and show him clean the clean water exists. That's what I really learned from this man. And so I'm so grateful to him. And right now, uh, also thanks to my wonderful team of you know producers and um, you know impact producers, we are figuring out a way to impact his life possibly, and in particular to give him uh, um, agency to be able to empower his work so that he doesn't have to wait anymore from an, an European filmmaker coming to his land, an American filmmaker coming to his land. He can just do himself what he can do and share to the world. That's our goal right now. This was, you mentioned to me also our previous conversation, it was hard to get people to accept it in their festivals, which blows my mind. Because oh, yeah. obviously the Academy thought it was one of the 15 best documentaries of the year to put it on their shortlist. Can you talk to me about that struggle of trying to get that into into other festivals? Yes, listen, and, and I take the chance to thank you uh, so much for, and all your team for recognizing the value of Wings of Dust. Um, you know, I believe that we are literally underdogs. Um, we are, Vidal and I are coming from nothing. And that's why I believe Lots of festivals probably didn't even know we existed. Um, so when you f see festival like your one, you're like, wow, you guys really are being careful to the little things and finding value in stuff that maybe nobody talks about. And the Academy as well, I was extremely surprised, uh, of course, in a good way, um, that it will, they will judge the film for what it is and um, be really interested in uh, giving advocacy to Vidal. This was really made me so happy and moves me as well to see. Well, I know it's a powerful story, but there's also sometimes you need external stuff to help promote a movie. And one of your producers is a big name, Benjamin Bratt. Can you talk to me about how he got involved with your project and how much that yeah. might have helped with, you know, award season? Absolutely. So about Benjamin Brad is funny because there is only one thing I knew about him, which was that his mom comes from the same indigenous um, community of Vidal, which is the Castro one. And I have a deep respect for this, those people, um, for their dedication to even risk their life for a better environment, which is something that as you know, an European, I kind of have issues understanding. I, I, I have troubles relating with. Um, so when I knew that about him, I literally called, emailed him and he watched the movie and he was really inspired by Vidal. And, you know, we had a first conversation and from the respect that I saw from this man, Benjamin, the respect he gave to Vidal, I was like, he, he's the right advocate for our film. Um, you know, lots of people might think that documentaries and Hollywood celebrities are two separate worlds. But our goal at the end of the day is not to be successful with a movie. Our goal is to make an impact. And if we can come all together as a strong team and raise our voice for a value that can be so powerful. And you know, we even have Mark Ruffalo posting our trailer on Instagram and reading the comments, so many people from South America, from uh, Latin America in Peru related with those issues. So that's that's the biggest rewarding you can ever think of. You got some pretty cool friends, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a documentary short. Are there are there thoughts or plans to expanding this to a feature length? And and if so, how would you go about it? Not really. Right now I am thinking about new ideas. But my goal, as I mentioned, is to allow Vidal now to make his first film, possibly his first feature film, documentary, and him as well have the fortune that I have to experience Hollywood as a real filmmaker, as a real director. That's my goal. And in my case, I don't think I want to keep exploring this topic. 
also for a safety concern of Vidal, uh, but I'll think about something else after. I mean, he might want to hire you on his documentary. You never know. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> so what is next for you? What uh, what other topics do you want to explore for your, for your next documentary? Well, to be honest, my next step is to be able to, you know, settle in, in Los Angeles and live a normal life. Uh, where I don't have to worry about my visa and you know other issues like this. That's my first goal. <laughs> and after I will start thinking about my new ideas. But definitely what inspires me is to find examples. I'll make you I'll make you you know a little uh, reflection. Everybody nowadays is hearing about climate justice, about social justice. Uh, there is a war, so many war going on. And we are so, there is so much apathy towards those things right now with social media, with the young generation as well. We kind of don't care because those things doesn't touch us directly. But at the same time, if we are able to show examples like Vidal, that's when people start caring. For example, Vidal, he is not an activist and a journalist, first of all. He is a father. So he even who doesn't behave in climate justice or global warming, or who wants to, who, who thinks that, you know, global corporation are doing a great job exploiting people, even those people will resonate with Vidal because he is a father. So I want to keep finding examples like this and, you know, make the most different people come together. For one, for one common uh, goal, which is the common good in the world. What what inspired you to go down this path? Now, now before I go there, did you go to school to be a journalist, filmmaker, or both? That's a great question. Uh, I started as a cinematographer. I used to do car commercials and you know adventure movies, and I I. I always had something missing inside myself. I was like, there's something more, you know, there's something more about money and, you know, about like doing really cool gigs around the world. There's something more. And documentaries, I feel like they are that key that connects the talent of filmmaking to a positive impact. If you do the, the two things in a smart way. So that's why I uh, chased that path and I went to New York to study journalism and documentaries at NYU. What was it like to be uh, 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 coming from Italy to uh, New York? I mean, that must have been, that, that's been wow. pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, you're asking me a great question. No, I, I love my country. Uh, it gave so much values to me of fraternity and, you know, family, uh, respect for the other person next to you. Like, that's all stuff that as an Italian I'm so proud of but at the same time you know I had to leave my country because the lack of opportunities especially in the documentary field uh you know a lot of um you know lack of uh, opportunities for young people mm -hmm. while in the states you know it was extremely hard to move and financially and so many so many struggles every day that I'm still going through but at the end, it's worth it because, you know, there are people like you uh, or like your team that don't really care if I'm young or, you know, where I come from. They only look at the quality of the work. And that's the, the people that I really want to, uh, you know, keep my path with. So it was really hard, but definitely really worth it to, to chase as a dream. What was it like to... Uh win that student academy award i mean that's that's pretty remarkable <laughs> so yeah i was just like really not dreaming anything but i was like you know the festival are not taking us uh so this film is not like good you know and i was really demoralized until one day i've been told you are one of the winner of the student academy awards and i was like wow you know that's pretty epic and being there on the stage with Vidal and seeing Vidal for the first time of his life going to America and talking to the, the global audience 
about his issue, that was an amazing emotion for me. That was just like, that's why I'm doing this, you know? And yes, I won an amazing award, which is a Student Academy Award. And it's one time in your life. And by the way, I recommend all the students to apply because you never know. But it's not about the award. It's about the chance that we had that night to speak to so many people. That's what really I am uh, remembering. And then what about the process of going through the uh, shortlist? Because obviously that could be, oh wow, you that know, was... we hear about those campaigns are just so overwhelming and stuff like that. But also it sounds like it'd be really exciting to go through. Yeah. Yeah, first of all, it was amazing to, um, I want to use this word, which maybe is not the right one, but I compete, compete with I am people. You know, I had friends in that short list and in that, you know, first session that had amazing documentaries. And you're like against your friend, but it's, it's, it's a pretty cool process because, you know, you're sharing uh, feedback, you're sharing thoughts. And in that competition, you kind of come together and it's amazing to celebrate the other person as well. If you don't make it, you celebrate your friend. And that for me was a really respectful um, uh, moment of my life. You know, when I did the shortlist, um, you were like, wow, this is how, you know, <laughs> this is not <laughs> But actually gave us a lot of good hopes. Well, I think that's going to cover. Well, actually, let me ask you this. You're in LA now. Have you been to Palm Springs yet? No, yet. I need to come. I need to, <laughs> you told me some good stuff about Palm Springs, the good life. I will, I will be well, there. Well, if you don't, know, at the very latest, we'll see you on March 21st to 25th at our festival, which we're looking forward to having you here to screening your film. I think you'll have an amazing wow. time meeting our other filmmakers as well as Teddy, our founder. Um, you know, no Teddy's the one who picked the film, so all, all the credit to Teddy. Teddy does a remarkable job of curating a lot of films, and, you He's know, he picks, yeah, and he picks films that say something. So I always appreciate that. I'm a journalist myself, and uh, I'm amazed by some of the stories that we have. You'll meet some, some amazing people, and they'll be happy to meet you. Uh, will Vidal be able to make it out? We will see. We will <laughs> see a lot of money. <laughs> involved so <laughs> right. we will hey. see how much the ticket cost and then we'll, we'll decide and bring him out to coachella too <laughs> oh yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> not his style <laughs> your style yeah I'll... <laughs> okay well georgia thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your remarkable film we're all excited to be viewing it here Thanks in your... Palm springs and uh, congratulations on everything Thank you. It's going to be epic. Thanks so much for for listening to the story. It's not obvious. It's not obvious thing in festivals nowadays. It's not something well, that you... we're hoping to change that. I think. Oh, yeah. I think. I think uh, this country, me personally, being a journalist, I think we need great journalism, and I think documentaries they they go very deep in the stories, and I think you'll you'll be remark. I think you'll be amazed by some of the films you see here as well. So. Um, I hope you have come out here, enjoy yourself. And I, I almost can guarantee you'll be inspired like I've been inspired. Inspired. So Thanks. anyways, uh, again, uh, American Documentary and Animation Film Festival will be March 21st to 25th at the Palm Springs Cultural Center. And tickets are going fast, so make sure you get in there and get your tickets. And uh, you'll experience some great films and meet some great film filmmakers just like Georgia. Georgia, thank you again for your time. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you. We'll we'll see you soon, okay? All right. Thanks again.